Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Arkwind and the expansion Arkwind Veil. Vale. This is a one to three player game for the base game and up to six players with the expansion. It's made by RPG Battles and it takes roughly about 20 to 30 minutes to play in for ages 13 and up. In the game Arkwind, you are going to be assigned a character at random, you're going to get a number of cards, and you're going to go ahead and fight in dungeons. This game kind of plays like Cutthroat Caverns, in which you're going to be having to deal with monsters as they pop up, and you have the opportunity to kind of send them on their way to some other unexpected uh, adventure, or tackle them on yourself to gain yourself some loot. Loot comes on a variety of different cards and tokens that you can use to gain new cards or more HP, and your objective is to remove everybody else from the game except for yourself. Last person standing is the winner in the game, talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. Setting up the game Arkwind is actually quite simple, and the way you set it up is you'll take two of the main decks of cards and shuffle them and put them in the middle of the table, the dungeon deck and the action deck. Additionally, depending on the number of players playing the game, is how many of each of the three cards are put into the action deck. Raise Dead, uh, Healing Potion, and Treasure Cards. A three-player game, put three of each of these cards into the deck. Additionally, you'll take out the teleport cards and give one to each player and set the rest aside. After the deck has been shuffled with those cards in it, you're going to deal out four cards to each player, meaning they'll have those four cards plus the teleport card. Additionally, each player is going to get a unique character. You can do this by rolling a d20, and the highest will get to choose first, picking up to a uh, one character of the variety of characters to select from. If you have the expansion, there's more characters, ranging from the druid, barbarian, ranger, alchemist, paladin, and more. After you've gotten your character, you're going to take a number of HP markers, uh, identical to the number of hearts on the bottom of your character's card. From there, you're going to have 1d20, set aside the extra loot and HP markers within reach of all players, and then determine the difficulty of the game. We recommend for a standard game to start at 12, but you can increase the difficulty if you would like to 15 at difficult and 18 in god mode. After you set the difficulty and you have the decks and your characters and their HP and your cards, you're ready to go. Let's start. Arkwind is a game that is played in turns, and basically what that means is on your turn, you're going to take each of the actions presented on your turn or phases, and then you're going to pass to the player on your left, and they're going to take their turn and each of the phases involved there, progressing up until the point where there's only one player left remaining. Hopefully that's you. How a turn works is pretty simple. On your turn, you're going to start with the number of cards in your hand. The four that you started with plus the teleport makes five. Then you're going to go ahead and draw a card. The draw phase is first, then it goes to the play phase. For the play phase, you can actually play any cards you want from your hand. You can play up to one of each type of equipment, whether it be armor or a weapon. You could play spells. Uh, you could go ahead and read the bones or dig through the graveyard with these cards. But basically the idea is play the cards that you want to play from your hand as long as they are applicable. After you have done so, you're going to go to the redeem step. And in the redeem step, you can go ahead and discard any of your loot tokens to do one of two things. You can discard two loot tokens to draw one card from this deck here, or you can go ahead and discard three loot tokens to take an HP. If you do that, you can never take more than your starting HP. Like for instance, the alchemist has five, so I can never go to six, and the paladin has four. After you have spent your loot tokens for your additional loot, you'll move on to the discard phase. And in general, each player has a five card hand limit. There are characters like the wizard that can increase that total, but for the majority it's five and you have to discard down to that limit with cards that are in your hand, not represented by cards that are either been played or cards that are currently equipped to you. From there, you're going to move on to the encounter step, the last step of the phase. How that works is you're going to simply take your d20, you're going to roll that d20, and then you're going to check the difficulty. Based on the difficulty of your specific game mode, in this case it's 12, if you roll equal to or less than this number, you're going to encounter the uh, card on the top of the encounter deck. I rolled a 2, the difficulty is 12, I'm going to go ahead and take a card. If I rolled higher, I would simply end my turn, it would pass to the next player. But, because I rolled a 2, I'm going to go ahead and flip over this card here. These cards can be traps, they can be events, they can be monsters, and basically how it works is pretty simple. If it's not a monster or a bad guy of some form, you're going to go ahead and just read it and do what it says. Ah, this card here is the Fountain of Youth. It says I can heal an HP for each card from your hand or equipped item that you sacrifice to the discard pile. So if I was at 1 HP but I had lots of cards in my hand, I could discard these cards to go ahead and gain HP up to my total. Uh, once you have fully encountered that card, you're done. Now, let's say instead of it being a, uh, a special like you know, trap or event, it was instead a monster, like this gargoyle here. These characters have an HP, they have a defense or armor value, and they have an attack value as well as an ability. 
basically how combat works is pretty simple. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to determine who, um, who begins the combat. And the way you do that is you roll a d20. The player to your left can be the person who assigns the d20 for the monster. Maybe you just roll these black die. Player who rolls the highest on initiative is the player who's going to go first. And then after that, you're just going to take turns attacking. Uh, or, of course, you can play cards when applicable. I'll roll my die. I'll take my die's number plus my attack. I will check the armor value of the monster. If that number hits, basically it exceeds the uh, HP point or the total point, I'll do a point of damage. If that monster is still alive, it will be their turn. The monster will roll their d20. They'll take their number that they rolled plus their attack value, and they will check my armor value. And if it exceeds it, I will take damage. And it'll just rinse and repeat until one of us has been destroyed. Additionally, there are crits in the game. If you happen to roll a 20, a nat 20 as they call it, that's an instant crit. You're guaranteed to hit, and you're going to do two points of damage. Uh, you can, like I said, play cards as well. Some of the cards will negate attacks or allow you to teleport uh, the monster to another player and have them fight the monster for you. And some cards will just give you a boost to your attack. Additionally, you might have armor that's going to give you an increased armor value or maybe a, a specific type of sword that's going to give you a bonus to your attack roll. These things are all applied as modifiers when you're rolling your d20. So it would be modifiers plus your attack plus your attack roll is it greater than your specific armor value of the monster. But either way, that's how it works. The monster is defeated, hopefully, and then you'll pass and it's the next player's turn. And they'll go through the steps. They'll draw a card. They will go ahead and play any cards they want. They will redeem all of their treasures that they would like to redeem, which you'll get tokens or you get treasure or loot tokens when you defeat these monsters here. Uh, and then you'll discard and then you'll encounter by rolling the die and seeing what happens. And that's it. That's the game. Player who is last alive is the winner of the game Arkwind. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So along with the review, we're going to do some fun caveats. Caveat number one is if you ever go through the encounter deck, which is not likely, but possible, you're going to go ahead and increase the uh, encounter to the higher difficulty. So it'll go from 12 to 15, and then you'll shuffle all the cards from the discard pile back into the encounter deck. Additionally, there's another cool aspect to the game, especially with the expansion, which allows you to customize your characters. Basically, it's going to give you a number of stat points that you can then utilize for your armor value, your attack, your HP, and number of cards in your hand. You can assign those values to the character, and the character is going to keep his ability that he normally starts with. Each of these characters has their own unique ability. Like, for instance, the alchemist says that once in every battle, in place of rolling for his attack, he can just do an HP damage. Uh, it's a non-magical attack, and it just straight up counts as one damage. Or, drink regent. Uh, once per game, they may drink a regent and heal one HP. So it's like an insta-heal, and every battle it's an instant deal one damage. The paladin, however, is once per game, the paladin may lay hands, healing one HP of damage to themselves or another player. This ability may be used at any time except for when dead, and once it's used, the ability is expended and may not be used again. So while this character is a little more, a little more powerful in their abilities, the paladin has a lot more stats, and each of these stats will base on their abilities as well. The different types of actions in the game. You can teleport monsters, like I already explained. You can teleport a monster if you think you can't beat it to somebody else, which is kind of a cutthroat caverns type of a game move. Or a scroll, inflict chaos. Uh, play any time, shuffle the draw deck, and you may not look at the order of the cards before and after, then draw a card. You may play this card after the draw phase of your turn, thus enabling a second draw from the deck during your turn. Or perhaps shift it, sifting the bones. You can play on your turn. You may select a single card from the discard pile and place it in your hand. Any card in the discard pile is eligible for selection. Wow, that's very nice, especially when a card has been played that was very strong. Time stop. Play any time. Choose one of the following. Skip the encounter phase of your turn, so you don't have to roll for the encounter, or avoid damage from a trap. Maybe a trap explodes, doing three damage to everybody. You can play a time stop, avoiding that damage. Uh, and each of these cards has their own notes on them for any questions that you might have. It makes them pretty simple to understand, like a teleport is probably the more complicated one, but you can only play a teleport on your turn, giving the monster to somebody else, meaning that they cannot teleport a teleported monster because it's technically my turn when I gave the monster over to you, so you have to deal with it. And then, of course, there are weapons in the game. There's a whole list of different little things you can add to your characters, uh, whether it be armor or weapons. It'll increase your value. Like, for instance, here is a Magic Morning Star giving you plus two. You can play it on your turn and equip weapons slot on the character card to gain a bonus on any d20 attack roll. So it just gives you an understanding of this, but mainly it's just for the stat rolls. So that's the same for most armor and uh, weaponry. 
each of the equipment, uh, each of the encounters are different and unique. Uh, feel kind of fun to pull and just see what happens, whether it be rolling 3d20s and for each 15 plus, either heal an HP or select a card from the discard pile. Wow, that's really nice. Or having to deal with something like a chaos storm, where it says that you have to roll a d20 for each card in your hand, and for each result of 11 or less, you discard that card and draw a fresh card from the draw deck, which can be good can be bad. Some of the monsters are more dangerous than others. There's a little bit of luck involved in that way. And of course, this game is chocked full of luck, right? That is, this is a D&D &D players type of card game. It's all about rolling and using the D20 system. You basically take in a D20, you roll for initiative, then combat begins by rolling a D20 and adding your attack and modifiers, attempting to defeat monsters, while also making your opponents suffer as much as you can and start trying to stay alive. Uh, it's very rare we're going to be helping people, but maybe there is some situations where you want to benefit somebody in hopes that they benefit you back but for the majority it's all about survival and trying to defeat the monsters gaining those precious precious loot tokens and mainly rolling high this dice is king in this game so it is definitely very luck based those of you who do not like luck based games even though you can modify your luck to an extent as far as weapons and armor goes and cards that you can play do give you modifiers and kind of change the odds at the end of the day, if you roll a 1 to a 5, you're likely going to fail. <laughs> also, this game, depending on the difficulty, can end very quickly. And by end, I mean you can jump out of the game and you're going to have to go ahead and play something else in the corner for the next 5 to 10 minutes. Oh no! Uh, because the game can be kind of uh, dangerous for you when you're fighting a gargoyle and you only have 1 HP left and they got 2 HP means they're going to be able to attack you again, so you got to hit that nat 20. And So there are ways in which the game can be very aggressive to you and very uh, punishing, which, you know, for some people, like my Cutthroat Caverns fans out there, are going to dig this type of a game. It's Cutthroat Caverns with a D20 system attached to it and some customization to your characters, allowing you to change the stats of your character, which is one of my favorite aspects to the game. I really like that idea, being able to kind of have your own customizing ability for your characters. I love the fact that they all have their unique abilities. Even the monsters have their own unique abilities. It's not always a monster. You don't always fight in an event or a counter. Sometimes you'll just get to kind of mold your your character in your hand which works really well the game's simple it's very straightforward you take your turn basically just drawing a card and checking for an encounter and then passing and you go back and forth until there's only one player left it's it's highlander right highlander meets cutthroat caverns meets a dnd 20 system it's a fun game but as long as you don't mind the luck the aggressive aspect of the game and the player elimination then you're gonna dig this game there are some varieties that can allow people to come back from the dead like raising the dead and whatnot but for the most part that's pretty much how the game goes it's quick though so it's not super punishing for players to have to sit out for a couple minutes before the game is over and most likely players die one at a time in kind of turn order and there's one player left if you're interested in arcwind there is a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick this game up Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Arkwind and of course the expansion Arkwind Vale. If you're interested in picking the game up, there's a link down below like I stated, as well as if you really appreciate the video, if you really want to help support us, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos where we cover all kinds of board games. And if you want, there is a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one, as well as a whatnot stream at Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. All right, guys, that's all you have for this time. And as always, I look forward to delving into the dungeon, gathering the treasures, and defeating the monsters while you all perish next time. <laughs>